now that we are done with the short run cost curves let's understand and study what are the long run cost curves before going to long run cost curves let's just understand what is the long run period long run period is that period wherein the level of output can be changed by changing all the factors together short run is that period wherein only one factor of production can be changed for changing the output so long run cost curves means the cost incurred by a firm in that period wherein it changes all its factors of production to change the level of output in other words it varies the factors of production to increase the level of output <clears throat> the importance of long run cost curves is to select which plant size we should go ahead with because what might happen is when the firm is growing it has to make decisions whether to invest more into fixed assets or into the current assets if it decides to invest more into fixed assets it has to sacrifice on its current assets at the same time if it invest more into current assets for that period it might do well but from the longer term perspective it will not be able to expand so when the firm is growing let's see what are the things it has to take care of the short run curve is called the plant curve the long run curve is called the planning curve let's see why now in the first diagram we can see that there are three short run average cost curves with the name sac1 sac2 and sac3 now how can a firm get three short run average cost curves the firm can get three short run average cost curves in a period of more than one short run period so for example the firm can vary the factors of production in a particular period so in the first period it varies only one factor of production let's say labor in the second period it varies the second factor of production let's say capital in the third period it varies the third factor of production let's say it purchases more land in the fourth period it might purchase more machinery so what happens is all these periods form short run short run short run periods and on a graph when we take them together we can form a long run period because in a long run all the factors are variable but in a short run only one factor is variable so one short run one factor variable the second short run other factor variable the third short run the third factor variable all taken together all the short runs taken together make a long run wherein all the factors become variable so in this way the firm can get as many short runs as it wants rather as many short run average cost curves as it wants let's see what do these three short run average cost curves depict now when the firm is growing it will always want to expand it will always want to increase the factors of production that it employs now let's take sac1 for example sac1 is a short run curve wherein only one factor is variable let's say labor is variable so initially you can see the sac curve it's falling 
and then after a point it goes on rising this is because it enjoys the economies of scale in the earlier period and then the diseconomies of scale in the later period this is also because initially as per the law of variable proportions the productivity of the variable factor is high after more of that variable factor is employed the productivity starts to fall and since the productivity starts to fall the cost tends to rise up so because of this reason the short run average cost curve is u shaped now as a firm i need to know how much output i can sell if i consider sac1 and oa is the level of output that i want to sell i will be on sac1 at point l however if i want to produce oa amount of quantity i can also be on sac2 now what is this sac2 sac2 curve implies that the entrepreneur has made some changes in his production facilities in sac1 only one factor of production was variable in sac2 there is some other factor which has become variable now so in the first curve only labor was variable now the entrepreneur has employed more capital let's assume that now because of this thing we get the curve sac2 so for producing oa number of units the producer the producer can also be on sac2 at point h but it is important to note that when the producer is on sac1 at point l his cost is lower than the sac2 which is at point h the point h is higher than the point l that means the cost of point h is more than the cost of point l so in this case sac1 is viable <laughs> this means it is better for the producer if he produces oa number of units with the same plant with the plant on which his existing production is taking place because if he invest more capital but does not increase the level of production what will happen is the cost per unit will go up and this is what is brought about by these two points he is producing only oa number of units for this he can either be on sac1 at point l or he can be on sac2 at point h <coughs> so by comparing these two points we can see that point l is lower than point h so it is important for the producer to minimize his cost and be on sac1 now let's say the producer wants to produce ob number of units for producing ob number of units he can be at point q now this point q is at the intersection of sac1 and sac2 point q is at the intersection of sac1 and sac2 so he can either choose to be on sac1 or he might choose to be on sac2 he will be indifferent at this point if he wants to produce ob number of units he will be indifferent whether to go with the plant of sac1 or to go with the plant of sac2 <coughs> sorry but it is recommended it is advised 
that he shifts to plant 2 that is he shifts to sac 2 why because in future if he plans to expand if he plans to produce more number of units he'll have to shift to he'll have to switch to sac 2 only he'll have to inject more money into his production facilities he'll have to change his production facilities now let's assume that the producer is producing oc number of units now for producing oc number of units he can either choose to be on sac2 at point k or he might choose to be on sac1 at point j now if he is increasing his production to oc units it is very important that he switches to plan 2 he can still continue at sac1 but what will happen is he'll go on employing more and more labor there but possibly the amount of land or the amount of machines are not enough to take care of that much labor because only labor is variable in the first short run so he can increase only the labor he might add more and more labor to his production facility <coughs> but it might happen that the amount of land or the number of machines or some other facilities are not enough to accommodate that much labor what will happen is this will reduce the productivity of the labor and lead to increase in the cost of production and this is what is happening here we can see that the cost at sac1 is higher than the cost at sac2 if he wants to produce oc number of units he can either be on sac2 at point k or be on sac1 at point j it is better for the producer that he is on point k at sac2 he makes a shift from sac1 to sac2 by injecting more capital he might purchase a bigger land or he might purchase more machinery for his workers or he might make some other changes in his factory now let's say he is producing OD number of units. Now again to produce OD number of units we can see that he can either be on plant 2 that is on SAC2 at point R or at the same point he can be on the SAC3 that is the third plant. The third plant the third factor becomes variable. Let's say he purchases more land. Now which one do you think it's advisable here because the producer would be indifferent on both the curves he is incurring the same cost he is at the same point on both the curves it is advised that the producer is on sac3 since in future if he wishes to expand furthermore it will be better for him that he is on sac3 because SAC3 is falling after this point. It is furthermore going down after this point. That means if he increases his production to let's say OE units, he will be at point S which is lower than point R. At the same time, At the same time, if he continues to be on SAC2, he'll incur a lot of cost being at point T on SAC2. So it is better for him that he shifts to SAC3. So this is how the producer decides as to which plant he should go for depending upon the amount of output he wishes to produce. 
in each short run one factor becomes variable in the first short run we assumed labor to be variable in the second short run we assumed capital to be variable and in the third short run we assumed land to be variable and when all these short runs are taken together and we join them we can make a curve out of this and this curve will be known as long run average cost curve this curve will be known as long run average cost curve this curve is formed by joining all the short run average cost curve this curve is tangent at a point in all the short run cost curves we can see that it is tangent to all the points in the short run curves so we can say that lac is tangent to one point at all the sacs but that point need not necessarily be the lowest point on that sac <clears throat> lac is formed by joining the points on sacs and on those points lac is tangent but these points need not necessarily be the lowest points like on sac 3 it is tangent at this point but this is not the lowest point lowest point is the point s so this is how the long run average cost curve is formed <clears throat> now let's come to the second diagram which shows this very thing that i have explained to you now there are seven short run average cost curves sac1 sac2 sac3 sac4 sac5 sac6 and sac7 now all these short runs are joined at a point on each of these short run curves and a curve is drawn through all of them now this curve is called lac long run average cost curve and this curve is tangent to all the short run average cost curves at those points however these points need not always be the lowest points and this is clearly shown in this example <clears throat> 